I'd like to talk about USB Type-C cables, particularly ones that are from uh, Five Below. This is a dollar store here in the United States. The problem that I've had with these cables in the past are they have actually melted my phone, and that's kind of the reason why I'm making this video is to bring awareness to the quality that uh, Five Below has with their cables. Obviously, you're getting a product that is very inexpensive for, for what it is. However, uh, USB cables in general, regardless of where I've ever purchased them, have always been reliable. Granted, USB-C cables are a little bit different because they can carry a much higher uh, amperage than what would normally be found in a uh, regular um, USB uh, Type-B connector or the uh, uh, mini or the, the micro USB. Uh, the USB Type-C can handle uh, much more than uh, 2 amps. And that's that could be part of the reason why this happened, but uh, I'm not so sure because I've had uh, other USB Type-C cables from other manufacturers and other, and other vendors and I've never had this problem before. This has actually happened twice within less than six months. Um, with fr from the same vendor, uh, and I gotta imagine that they're using the uh, the same uh, manufacturer. So this one is um, iCover Smart Tech. Uh, let me just show you exactly what happened. So uh, my phone was a LG V20, great phone. Um, it uses the the Type C connector, obviously. And if you look at the bottom here, uh, you can see a little bit of a, a melt, uh, melting of the plastic that had happened. Uh, basically what the backstory on this was is I uh, went to the gas station. Uh, I was, while I was driving uh, to the gas station, I, I smelt something that was like burning plastic and uh, I heard little little crackling and I wasn't really sure what it was. Uh, and then I go into the the gas station itself to go uh, pay for the gasoline, came back out, and there was a, a, a very um, big odor of, of melted plastic. And uh, I, I was like, wow, this is really weird. What is this coming from? Is there some wires or something happening in my car? You know, something melting? I don't know. And then I go and I grab go to take my phone and pull it out because, you know, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to leave my phone in the car if the car is about ready to burst into flames. And uh, I pick up my phone and my phone, phone is extremely hot on the bottom here. And I'm like, wow, that's really crazy. Unplug the phone. And, um, and then I look at the connector. And this was the original cable that I had. And you can see there's definitely some discoloration and there's actually the, the residue of the plastic that was connected to my phone there and that's actually where it was melting. So this is the connector that used to be in my phone. So you can actually see the discoloration, you can see the melting that take uh, that took place. I don't know exactly what all the materials are, are in, in these uh, connectors. Um, but it did get substantially hot. Now, this is a metal, like an aluminum uh, housing on, on the outer side here. And uh, and obviously this is metal, but it was, the situation that had happened was this had gotten so hot and I can't even, I can't even push these together anymore because they've been essentially ruined. So they won't, they won't go in anymore. Uh, and essentially it left me almost stranded with my phone for the rest of the day because uh um, I wasn't able to charge my phone anymore and, uh, and left me out for probably uh, a couple days because I ended up having to get a um, replacement connector and I replaced it. And luckily I have a hot air station that I was able to rework this and, and replace this, but I won't get into that. Um, this is actually the uh, motherboard that it came off of. Anyway, um, there's another reason why this phone isn't working right now, but it, it almost killed this phone, uh, and it almost caught my car on fire. And you're probably thinking to yourself, no, you know, yeah, it was getting hot, but it wouldn't catch your car on fire. Well, here's another situation. Uh, again, th so this was from five below. 
Less than six months later, I had purchased a replacement cable. I thought that what had happened to me was a fluke. I thought that it was totally by chance. I thought that, well, you know, it could have been something in my pocket. Something got wedged in there. Something happened. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, you, you don't know these things. So less than six months later, I bought this connector. And you can see here, this connector has just about completely melted. I mean, it's unusable. Um, and quite frankly, if I were to actually plug this in to a, um, a power source again, it would actually continue to start melting again because something has happened. I don't know what it is, whatever type of connectors they're using, however they're manufactured from whatever uh, the vendor is, like this iCover Smart Tech or whatever it is, whatever five below, whoever they're sourcing these from have a critical failure point, and I don't know exactly what it is. Whatever it may be, it is causing these connectors to heat up inside. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, it's probably something to do with dust or metal getting in here or whatever. Here's the funny part. My phone wasn't even plugged into this. I went to Home Depot. I went, I was in Home Depot um, shopping. I was in there for about 30 minutes and then I came back into my car and again, the inside of my car was just reeking of melted plastic. And I'm like, okay, this is really weird because, you know, my phone is even plugged into this. And I saw this and there was little wisps of, of smoke coming off of this connector. And I looked at it and I just ripped the cable out of the, um, the, the charger. And, uh, and I just put this, um, cause it's a, it's actually a truck, not a car. Um, just put this in the bed of the truck and I left it like that. I didn't want to have to deal with this or, or the smell. I had to roll the windows down. Anyway, um, so anyway, it, it, it's not even a failure of, of the connector on the phone anymore. Now this is a failure of just the cable itself. And it's probably what had, exactly what had happened to uh, this connector too, except my phone just happened to be uh, plugged in at the time and the, the heat transfer the thermal transfer from this connector to this connector You know, they're both pieces of metal. It got hot enough that it ruined this connector So I don't even think the connector of my phone was at fault I solely blame the fault on the connector of this cable and again I wasn't even plugged in when this happened because otherwise I would have been out of my my phone would have been broken twice in less than six months both of these cables have been bought um, with my own money from five below for five dollars and um, and this is actually the box and I saved this box for um, uh, I believe it was the white cable yeah the white cable is what I bought uh, next and um, and so I saved the the packaging from it um, I think it was Anyway, this was the packaging that it came in. So I, I saved this. I'm almost certain that it was from the white one, but maybe this was the packaging from the black one. But anyway, I saved it regardless because after it happened, I was like, no, I'm, I gotta document this. So yeah, anyway, it just put, put me out of commission uh, the first time around for a little while. And it was very frustrating because you can't use your phone and, uh, you know, and you're, you've got limit, the phone still worked. You, I just had limited battery that, that I could use. So I pretty much had to turn my phone off until the end of the day. So I could go back and, and, you know, make any phone calls or check any text messages that I missed. Um, why did I make this video? Don't buy cables from five below. Uh, I'm not going to condemn the whole business just because of faulty cabling, um, but I would not purchase anything from them that was electronic related. Uh, it just seems like whoever they're getting their supplies from just has a critical failure. And I would absolutely hate for that was in my car, you know, granted a car, uh, a car can catch on fire. Uh, you know, you can buy another one. Uh, but for example, if this happened in somebody's home and they went to, work or they left or they did something or there was a teenager you know that that got a charger and was charging their phone 
and they were home alone or something like that. I can only I can only imagine. Uh, so uh, this is a lesson in twofold. One, uh, yeah, don't buy cheap cables. I know that that's what people are going to be screaming for in the comments is, uh, you know, don't buy a cheap cable, don't buy a cheap cable. And I get that. But the other thing that you have to consider is, is that there are a lot of companies that will actually sell you a cable for ridiculous pricing. So, for example, if I go to Best Buy or I go to Micro Center or I go to um, Fry's or I go to any electronic store and I buy a any type of cable, little do you know that that cable that you purchased, you know, rather it, you have this this nice big thick jacketing on here or this tiny little uh, uh, flexible one that has the, the braided jacket, unless you actually cut this cable open, you have no idea what's inside this cable. And you cannot trust, you cannot not always trust based on price. If this was a fifty dollar cable instead of a five dollar cable. Let's let's add some gravity to it. Say that this, this was a fifty dollar cable. They said, oh yeah, it's got aluminum jacket here and it's got the the braided uh, outer shielding and all that other stuff and top quality parts and this and that and the other thing. Unless you actually take a cross section from this cable, you have no idea if this is copper if this is aluminum, if this is copper coated aluminum, if this is solid core, if this is uh, stranded, you have no idea what's in this. How many strands does it have? Does it have two strands? A lot of these products that are sold in big box stores, uh, what they'll typically do is they'll actually get it for a very, very low margin. You know, they might get these cables for cents on the dollar, or they might get it for a dollar or something like that, because you got to remember they're buying it in, in huge, huge quantities. When they get these cables, the, who they're buying them from, they are not the, the store that you're buying them from. They're not doing quality checks. They're not testing these cables. They're just taking from whoever they bought it from. Now, they might say that, hey, we need to see certifications saying that the, the, everything has been independently tested uh, through different um, certification houses and stuff like that. But you have no idea, and neither does the, the reseller that's selling these. Uh, but I, I would definitely say that, you know, somebody like a, like a big chain like Five Below could do a little bit more due diligence and actually get products that have some some degree of certification because yeah on the outer jacketing here it might say yeah it's rated for 30 volts and and yeah yeah that's the the cable well what about the connector what are the tolerances on the connector and you have to keep in mind that uh you know on old usb type equipment there was only about five pins and the spacing was pretty significant now you've got you know uh probably two dozen pins on here and the spacing is ridiculous. I mean, you know, unless you actually go in here with a magnifying glass or a microscope, you can't actually see all the pins on there. And actually my camera, I can't even get it close enough for it to um, focus on that. Let's see if we can get, you can probably just barely see all the different pins on there that it's dealing with. And I mean, you get any type of metal or anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's going to short out. But the thing is, I haven't, I've, I've gone through dozens of USB-C cables from other vendors, from Amazon, from Micro Center, from uh, Best Buy, all these other places, never had a problem. Uh, the one on my nightstand, I've had it for uh, three times as long as these, and I've, I've plugged it in every night ever since I got this phone, and I've had this phone for two and a half, three years now. So you can imagine every single night, you know, that that's hundreds and hundreds of, 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 cycles and I never had a problem and it just happened with these cables that were both in my car and I use on a you know maybe a daily basis maybe you know a couple times a week I don't use I don't use it as much as the one on my nightstand but it just gets you to thinking so anyway I'm going to wrap up the video it, it's getting a little long here but I just wanted to go over um I will not buy any type of charging cables or any electronic devices from Five Below anymore simply because um, the, the quality 
uh, though it looks nice for what you're paying, um, the quality is subpar in its safety factors. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you've gotten to the end of this, uh, really appreciate you listening to my rant here. Um, it's just something that just kind of scared me, and I just want to make sure that nobody else gets bitten by this. And if you've had experiences with these cables or any other cables from any other manufacturer, um, please you know, submit it in the, in the comments below and, uh, like to hear, you know, some, some other horror stories just to know that, uh, I'm not the only one, at least from five below. So, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.